hello viewers welcome to my channel once again in today's video we are going to discuss chemistry jump syllabus in our previous video i taught you physics jump syllabus and i believe it will be of great help to you guys however in this video you are going to know the topics you're supposed to read in chemistry ahead of 2023 jump examination so if this is your first time of coming to our channel please subscribe for our upcoming useful video now let us start the first topic on the table is separation of mixtures and purification of chemical substances when talking about mixtures mixtures are those compounds that are finished that are physically combined together and they can be separated by separation techniques what about its separation techniques such as cv evaporation vaporization deuteration decantation you know sublimation and others like uh, chromatography so those ones are separation techniques you have to study and understand them very well then here we talk about pure and impure substances for example elements are pure substances and mixtures are impure substances then we talk of boiling and melting points when talking about boiling and melting points it varies from organic to inorganic for example inorganic compounds have the highest boiling and melting points due to the strong electrovalent bond that occur between them then when talking about low boiling and melting point is a characteristic of uh, organic compounds due to the covalent bond that exists between them then here we talk of elements compound and mixtures then here is very necessary to understand first two elements what about 109 elements in periodic table but in this case just understand the first two elements from hydrogen to car to calcium then here are the compounds when talking about compounds they are the combination of two or more substances chemically then when talking about mixtures they are the combination of two or more things physically they can be separated by separation techniques here are copper uh, chemical and physical change when talking about chemical change there are the changes in which new substances are formed and cannot be easily to revise then when talking about physical changes there are the changes that no new substance is formed and it can be reversed to its uh, initial elements then here we talk of separation processes then from here we just have to understand separation techniques then if we move further, our topic 2 here is chemical combination. When talking about chemical combination, it is the process in which a uh, reactant a compound and product is formed. That is, uh, elements of compounds are combined together to form new compound. For example, when you combine hydrogen to oxygen to form water, or when you combine sodium to chlorine to form sodium chloride, then here we talk of stoichiometry. This one shows the relative amount of substances that take part in a chemical reaction. For example, you may see questions like what mass of sodium chloride will be required to neutralize this or something like that. So you just have to read and understand stoichiometry very well. Here we talk of laws of definite and multiple proportions, law of conservation of mass in which which says that uh, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. That is the amount of reactors combined together in a chemical equation is equal to the product form provided the equation is well balanced then here we talk about gay sachs law of combining volumes which shows the volume of uh, particular compounds that react together to form new compounds for example when hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water maybe the, vo the given volume of hydrogen is 20 centimeter cube and that of oxygen is 10 centimeter cube then they ask you that what volume of water will be formed that is where you just have to balance the equation and write down their ratios then and just deal with two uh, little arithmetic expression you arrive at your answer then here we talk about chemical symbols formulae equations and their uses we're talking about symbols that the let's say they are the alphabet that we use to represent elements for example when we talk of sodium it has the symbol of na which is natrium because it got its latin name from natrium it got its symbol from its latin name which is natrium then we talk of hydrogen which have the symbol of h and so on then here we talk of formulae that is they are the equation that we use to represent a compound or the balancing of equations for example you may see something like um, 
H2O, Natu Sofa, and H2SO4, and so many of them, which it which indicates formula. Then equation. For example, when talking about equation, we have the reactor side and the product side. The reactor side is where the equations or particular elements are combined together to form the new side, which is known as the product side, and they are uses. Then we talk of relative atomic mass based on carbon 12. For example, relative atomic mass is also known as mass number. And what is mass number? Mass number is equivalent to the number of protons and neutrons. For example, the mass number of hydrogen is 16 because the atomic number of hydrogen, which is also known as number of proton, is 8. Sorry, I mean oxygen. At the same time, the number of neutron is 8, and 8 plus 8 will give you 16. So that is how it is. And here you just have to know the number of mole. For example, one number of mole of hydrogen is equivalent to when they are just the only symbol of hydrogen, there's no any um, number in front of just the symbol of hydrogen, which is H. And the number of mole there will be just one. For example, we're talking about um, Cl2 now. Cl2 is chlorine. The number of mole is also one. But it have two atoms, you understand? Just have the ability to differentiate between number of mole and the mass number and the atomic number. That is all you need in this case. Then when you move number, when you move further here, the third topic is kinetic theory of matters. Under kinetic theory of masters, we have Boyce law, gas law, uh, and general gas equation. So that is just uh, what you need here. And you just have to understand melting, vaporization, boiling, freezing, condensation. They are very, very simple. And what we call Brunier movement. When Brunier movement is when you put things like uh, blue sulfur in water, you know that after some time it will be diffusing upward and it will at the same time after some time it will cover everywhere all water which indicates that it will be it or it undergoes the brunier movement then condensation here when talking about condensation is when a vapor turn back to liquid again freezing is when something change from liquid to solid then when talking about boiling is when the atmospheric pressure is equal to the internal pressure of a liquid that is where we talk of boiling and we have different boiling points for example water have the boiling point of 100 degrees celsius and ethanol have the, the, the boiling point of 78 degrees celsius then we're talking about vaporization this the process whereby liquid changes to gaseous state then we talk of melting which is when the bond that connects um, solid together have been broken to form liquid. For example, where you melt an aluminium or any kind of liquid at high temperature, it will change to you know, liquid. Then here we talk of uh, the laws. Now I've stated as well, Boyce's law, Charles' law. This Boyce's law shows the relationship between pressure and volume. Charles law shows the relationship between volume and temperature, which is that the volume of a given mass of gas is directly proportional to the temperature provided pressure remains constant that is Charles law and Graham's law the official datum's law of partial pressure you just have to understand them and the ideal gas equation which is pv equal to nrt at the same time the relationship between vapor density of gases and the relative molecular mass so vapor density and relative molecular mass where relative molecular mass is vapor density times two. So I think that's the relationship between them. Just read them, you will understand. Then when you move further, we have atomic structure and bonding. We have different scientists that contribute to discover the atomic structure. One of them is JG Tulsi, followed by Datum's atomic theory, Millikan, Rutherford, Mosley. And this JG Tulsi discover proton and then um, Rutherford discovered the nucleus of an atom then we're talking about, about uh, Millikan he discovered a uh, neutron I think and that is all you need in this category and you should be able to understand atoms, molecules and ions very well four atoms are the smallest the particle of an element which can take part in a chemical reaction molecules are the combination of atoms and ions here there are charges that are present 
on a particular atom. For example, sodium have the ion of plus, potassium have the ion of plus, oxygen have the ion of minus two, and that is what you call ion their charges. Then when we move further, we talk of air, what constitutes of air, what are what combined together to make up air here. The natural gaseous constituents are the proportion in air. For example, we have nitrogen, oxygen, water vapor, carbon dioxide, and the noble gases. They are the you know, natural gaseous constituent of air. Then air has mixtures and some use of the noble gases. Just have to read and understand this category very well. Then when you move further, we have water. For example, we have permanent and temporary hardness of water. You have to read them very well. Permanent hardness of water is when, for example, when water reacts with uh, things like Natuko tree and temporary hardness of water is when it reacts with sorry, permanent hardness of water is when magnesium uh, H that is MgSO4 which is magnesium tetrahydrosulfate reacts with water and you, have, you just have to know that how water can be purified is very necessary for example by adding chlorine by adding alum and all those things so those are the things you need to know here then when we move further treatment of water for tank supply which is the one i just said by adding alum by adding chlorine and those things water of crystallization you just have to read water of crystallization and understand it is very simple then a fluorescent is when um, a particular compound lost its water of crystallization. The liquid state is when and a particular compound such as ion or element is exposed to air to make that particular compound to become so, a solution. And this hygroscopic, it will absorb water but it will not turn to solution. Example of the substance exhibiting these properties are also important to be known. Then when we move further, we talk of solubility. When talking about solubility, other solubility we have saturated, the one sorry we have unsaturated, the one that the dissolve more than it can occupy, then saturated, the one that dissolve that dissolve something below what it can occupy, and we have super saturated. Our solubility curves, these places you just have to have a fundamental knowledge of graph, then you are good to go here. When you move further, we have environmental pollution. Uh, in this place, it's very good to know polluting compounds such as nitrogen, uh, NO2, which is nitrogen 4 oxide, sulfur 4 oxide, mm, chlorofluorocarbon, and um, acidic rain. All those things, they are the pollution air pollution we know then look at other air pollution here see what i'm talking about hydrogen sulfide carbon oxide. this carbon oxide when inhaled causes the the hemoglobin which may result to lung disease and this is so two known as sulfur which causes acidic gray then this is chlorofluorocarbon which affects ozone and destroy the ozone and you know that when ozone is destroyed the amount of sunlight that will be reaching that will be reaching the earth will be maximum and dust then we talk of water pollution all these with this chemicals that are dumped into water you know that they reduce the amount of oxygen present in the water which may cause damages to the aquatic life then we move further we talk of soil pollution soil spillage biodegradable and non-biodegradable pollutants then when we move further topic 9 here is acid base and salt you see an acid is a substance which when dissolved in water produce hydrogen ion or hydrogenium ion as it only positive ions then we talk of bases bases is the one that uh, when dissolved in water always split produces hydroxide ion then we're talking about salt is the neutralization of acid and base salt will be formed at the same time water will be formed in topic 10 we talk of oxidation and reduction in oxidation when high oxygen is added to a particular compound we call it oxidation and when hydrogen is added to a particular compound we call it reduction at the same time when hydrogen is removed from a particular compound we call it oxidation 
and when oxygen is removed from a particular copper we call reduction then we talk of electrolysis you know what electrolysis is another electrolysis is able to know how to for example electrolysis of brine electrolysis of uh, acidified water which is h 2 so far and when we move further we talk of energy changes under energy changes we have enthalpy we have endothermic reaction at the same time exothermic reaction then here we, are, we talk of rates of chemical reaction where catalysts are needed to speed up the rate of chemical reaction you should be able to know what catalyst is and all those things then when we move further which is topic 14 we talk of chemical equilibrium equilibrium is a situation whereby there is no any observable change between two objects in action and we have different types of equilibrium we have stable equilibrium, unstable equilibrium, neutral equilibrium then here we talk of non-metal and their compound, for example, nitrogen and their and its compound, oxygen and its compound, hydrogen and its compound. You should be able to know them very well and know the proof, preparation of those compounds, their physical properties, their chemical properties. That is all you need under um, these <coughs> non metals and their compounds. For example, when you are preparing nitrogen. There is one, one that is prepared industrially by fractional distillation of air where other less quantity uh, gases such as carbon dioxide and others they are removed and only nitrogen will be, will be left in, in pure form. Then we talk of metals and their compound. For example, other metals and their compound will have transition elements such as iron, uh, zinc, and um, copper so here all you need to know is their preparation their characteristics their pro uh, chemical properties as well as their physical properties you understand then when you move further which is topic 17 it is organic compounds you know that organic compounds happen to be the compounds between uh, carbon and other elements such as oxygen sulfur and halogen you know halogens are the group seven elements and here you have to understand things such as homologous series. Homologous series are the numbers of organic compounds which are alkene, alkene, and alkyne. When alkene have a carbon to carbon single bond, alkene have carbon to carbon double bond, and alkyne have carbon to carbon triple bond. Those are the things you have to understand here. Yeah, and their reaction. Their reaction is very, very necessary. For example, we're talking of alkene, they undergo chlorination reaction. But they can undergo hydrogenation reaction. But alkene undergoes hydrogenation reaction. When they react with hydrogen, that hydrogen will remove the double bond between them to form single bond. Then you just have to understand their preparation. Those that are gases, those that are liquid, and those that are solid. So when you move further, we talk of chemistry and industry. Chemical chemical industry, that's from a child. This place is just read to read. You just have to read and understand them they are very very simple and less complicated so in our next video we are going to discuss the most repeated questions in chemistry and physics so if this is your first time of coming to our channel please consider subscribing if, even if you can't subscribe just like our video so that you can able to see our upcoming videos thanks for watching